Happy Sabbath, church family. I trust everyone is keeping well and warm and safe. This week, I would like to share a message I came across that discusses thinking about God's law as a law of love and not of obligation. But first, let's open with a word of prayer. Good morning, church. Will you please close our eyes for the opening prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us another day and another chance to grow closer to you. I would ask that you grace us with your wisdom so that we may walk in your footsteps and be leaders and not followers. I ask this in your holy name. Amen. Hello, friends. I hope you've had a good week and are looking forward to or are already experiencing the rest of God's blessed Sabbath day. You know, the Sabbath is like a temple in time, sanctified, blessed, made holy by God himself. And it is so rich and deep in its meaning, pointing to God as the creator of heaven and earth and the sea and springs of water, as we read in Revelation 14, verse 7. And as we rest from our labors, as God rested from his, we are reminded that it is much more than a physical rest. It symbolizes a deep spiritual rest as explained in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, which say, There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Now, isn't it interesting that in the very heart of the Ten Commandments, specifically in the Fourth Commandment, we find rest. Rest from our labors, rest from worry and care, rest from trying to save ourselves. And in fact, perhaps that is a good way to look at God's instructions as given in the Ten Commandments as a whole, rather than seeing them as some strict list of you better not do this, you better not do that. Instead, we can see them as promises of what we can become through Christ, our living Savior. You see, in the beautiful book of 1 John, we read many magnificent descriptions of the love of God and his power to help us to be all that he plans for us to be. And in 1 John chapter 5, verses 2 through 5, we read the following amazing promise. By this, we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Now, did you catch that? Victory comes through faith. Faith in the blood and saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you ever stop to consider, what if God's law was a law of love and not of obligation? What if it's not a series of do's and don'ts, but 10 promises for a better life? These questions were asked by a young Seventh-day Adventist by the name of Grant Steinweg, who wrote the following on his Facebook page. God never asks us to obey without giving us access to the power to do so. And this power doesn't reside inherently in human nature, but comes from outside our proud hearts. The power is in the word of God itself. It is the same word that said, let there be light. And there was light and said, let us make mankind in our image. And the human race was born. In the same way that God creates, he also redeems. Thus, the very law that 
to some may seem a burden or obligation, contains within it the very power to heal and to restore. Isn't that beautiful? I'm really impressed with that. As Grant, who is a very talented musician, continued to contemplate these, these amazing thoughts, he composed and recorded a beautiful song. Now let's listen right now as Grant shares his song with us, The Ten Promises. to take my place you'll no longer take my name in vain you'll rest in my sabbath grace i am the lord who brought you out of bondage i bore the cross to share with you sweet knowledge that I love you more than life itself just look to Calvary I want the very best for you why don't you just trust me you'll honor your father and mother that your life may be long You'll no longer hate nor murder. Blood will no longer stain your hand. I am the Lord who brought you out of bondage. I bore the cross to share with you sweet knowledge that I love you more than life itself. Just look to Calvary. I want the very best for you. Why don't you just trust me? You'll not murder, nor steal, nor commit adultery. You will not bear false witness against your neighbor. You'll not covet your neighbor's things. I'll be your friend and forever faithful. I am the Lord who brought you out of bondage. I bore the cross to share with you sweet knowledge that I love you more than life itself. Just look to Calvary. I want the very best for you. Why don't you just trust me? I am the Lord who brought you out of bondage. I bore the cross to share with you sweet knowledge that I love you more than life itself. Just look to Calvary. I want the very best for you. very best for you. Why don't you just trust me? Trust me. Trust my words of
Friends, I hope you were so blessed by that magnificent song by Grant Steinweg. I was blessed. Thank you, Grant, for using your talents to glorify God and to bless many people by bringing into focus God's ten promises. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for giving the Ten Commandments. They didn't just appear through your providential hand on Mount Sinai. They have existed throughout eternity. For the Ten Commandments are at the foundation of your law of love. They're part of your character. Thank you, Lord, for giving us these Ten Promises, these beautiful ways in which we can connect with you for an abundant life, not only here, but throughout eternity. And Lord, bless people like Grant, who have taken time to reflect and to put into words and into music the wonderful relationship we can have with you. Thank you, Lord, for these wonderful 10 promises, these 10 commandments, which point us to you and to a fuller life. Thank you that you are preparing us through your righteousness, your justifying and sanctifying righteousness for the soon coming of Christ when we can spend eternity with the author of those 10 beautiful promises. We ask all of this in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Something new and exciting was happening on campus at the Adventist University of Venezuela. Students and faculty from the theology department wanted to do something to have a lasting impact on the people around them. In 2016, they opened the Center of Languages, giving university students access to learning English, Portuguese, and French. Language skills were in high demand. I had the privilege of seeing the birth of the Center of Languages and organizing the curricular contents of the courses that were taught. It was a great challenge, but with the support of my team of teachers, we were able to advance in fulfilling the mission. This Center of Influence has since evolved and now opens its doors to the entire community, many of whom are not familiar with the Adventist message. For a year, I taught English in the Center of Language. Afterward, I received the responsibility of uh, coordinating the Center of Language. In 2019, we received a lot of students that were unbelievers. So we uh, noticed that and create some strategies for reach them and uh, share with them about the gospel. A center of influence is the most effective way to present the gospel to those who do not know Christ. It is an easy way to show to others the way through your lifestyle. The courses include devotionals and spiritual discussions that have piqued the interest of some students. One of the most excellent things about the course that Professor Anthony passed into us the spiritual seeds that he sowed in each of our heart. It has helped me in my personal, social, and communicational development with another people, and the devotional helped me in my spiritual life. I would describe the experience in the Center of Languages as an opportunity that it motivated me to keep learning English and thanks to all the values that it gave me, I'm able to communicate in the language of English in the United States. In 2020, despite the challenges caused by the pandemic, the Center of Influence continued teaching its classes online, attending 138 students. 16 of them non-Adventists. 
this center of influence will continue working to reach the enriched. As the school keeps expanding, they have to adapt to constant changes and growing demand. Part of the 13th Sabbath offering this quarter will assist this university and others across the inter-American region to further develop centers of influence. The Center of Influence of INAP and Zeta Ben invites all the members of the 70th Adventist World Church to generously contribute the 13th Sabbath offering and thus support the development of the missionary projects in this region of the world. Thank you for your kindness. In UNAP, we will go.